Hello and welcome to our channel. Almost two years ago, the topic of Iran's first supersonic cruise missile attracted significant attention on social media, as Iran's achievement of this technology marked a major step in enhancing the country's defense capabilities, something unprecedented before. Since then, we have examined the framework of Iran's supersonic missile in our videos and explored various possible scenarios related to it. However, today, we can speak with complete certainty about this particular missile. During the recent visit of the Supreme Commander-in-Chief to review the latest achievements of Iran's Ministry of Defense and Armed Forces Logistics, despite all security protocols, a few frames of this project were leaked, which will be the subject of today's video. Ultimately, we will examine what this unique Iranian missile looks like, how it is made, what stage of development it is in, its significance, and its applications. As always, we invite you to stay with us until the end of today's video. What is supersonic? Subsonic, transonic, supersonic, hypersonic, and ultrasonic. These are terms that most of us are somewhat familiar with, and they hold great significance in military sciences. Clearly, when we hear the word sonic, we are dealing with sound, or more precisely, with the speed of sound. Researchers have categorized different speed ranges to make it easier to describe objects based on their velocity. Since each speed range has its own advantages and disadvantages, discussing this subject in the field of weaponry is considered fundamental. For example, transonic refers to objects moving at speeds close to the speed of sound, specifically within the range of 0.8 to 1.2 Mach. In our discussion, supersonic refers to any flying object or projectile that travels the majority of its flight path at speeds between Mach 1 and Mach 5. However, Maintaining continuous flight at such speeds, particularly for a cruise missile, is not an easy task. For this reason, only a handful of countries have pursued this type of specialized weaponry over the past 50 years. Even today, most of the world's well-known cruise missiles, from the Tomahawk to the Kaliber, have a maximum speed of below Mach 1.5. But now, let's move on to the Iranian supersonic missile. During the mentioned visit, a model was seen in one of the booths, with an interesting appearance. Although it seems that significant effort was made to keep this model out of the frame, now that it has been captured on camera, whether unintentionally or perhaps entirely intentionally, a simple 90-degree rotation reveals important details. The model features a standard cylindrical body with four extensions attached to its sides, appearing as if four smaller missiles are connected to a main body. This is a completely standard design for supersonic missiles. According to current information, the Iranian supersonic missile has been developed in two phases, with the first phase already operational and the second phase planned for the year 1405, 2026-2027. The final product will have a speed of approximately Mach 3 and a range of 300 kilometers. P270 Mosquet 3M80 SSN22 Sunburn and Cage 41 Different names for a unique missile one of the first supersonic anti-ship cruise missiles, which for a long time was the nightmare of NATO's fleet in the Baltic and is still considered the godfather of deadly Chinese and Russian cruise missiles. The Moskit or Sunburn missile is a supersonic anti-ship missile designed by the Soviet Union in the late Cold War era. The purpose of developing this missile was to equip destroyers and missile-launching frigates with an anti-ship weapon capable of targeting aircraft carrier battle groups and penetrating their powerful air defenses. The Soviet solution to this challenge was to minimize the detection and interception time to the greatest extent possible. This objective was achieved through a combination of the sea-skimming flight pattern and supersonic speed. The Moskit missile has a long cylindrical body equipped with a ramjet engine and four separate air intakes. To withstand the heat generated by air friction at high speeds and low altitudes, its body, wings, and air intakes are made of titanium. Upon launch, a solid-fuel rocket booster located inside the ramjet combustion chamber accelerates the missile to its required initial speed. The booster is then separated from the missile's body by airflow, activating the ramjet engine. The missile's seeker is housed inside a transparent nose cone, where it detects radar waves. Behind the seeker, the guidance unit and radar altimeter are installed. The warhead section is positioned between the guidance unit and the fuel tank. The Sunburn missile utilizes both active and passive radar seekers, but lacks a secondary optical seeker. 
In the initial phases, it relies on inertial navigation to move toward the target area. Mid-course updates can be received via data link, provided by anti-submarine helicopters, maritime patrol aircraft, warships, or satellites. When the missile reaches approximately 80 kilometers from the target, its radar seeker in the nose cone is activated to home in on the target. If no target is detected within the radar range, the missile adjusts its course toward the nearest source of radio frequency emissions. The Mosquet missile is equipped with a 300 kilogram warhead featuring a delayed detonation fuse. Additionally, the missile's high kinetic energy and any remaining unburned fuel contribute to increased destruction upon impact. The initial version of this missile had a range of approximately 90 kilometers, the second version extended to about 120 kilometers, and the final version has a range between 160 and 250 kilometers. Although the Mosquet's range is shorter than some cruise missiles, its supersonic speed and low-altitude flight path throughout its entire trajectory make detection and interception extremely difficult. A naval vessel targeted by this missile would have less than 50 seconds from launch to impact. But where do these details lead us? For years, there has been speculation regarding Iran's development of supersonic anti-ship missiles. But it was unclear which platform these missiles were based on, or what they would look like. At the same time, some unofficial sources have claimed that Iran purchased a number of sunburn missiles from Russia more than two decades ago. Finally, at a recently held exhibition, a model of the propulsion section and air intake of Iran's developing supersonic missile was displayed. This image provided crucial clues, suggesting that the Ministry of Defense is developing a supersonic anti-ship missile based on the sunburn platform. As is well known, the Sunburn missile utilizes a solid fuel booster to achieve its initial acceleration, and then it switches to a ramjet engine as its primary propulsion system, allowing it to maintain supersonic speed until it hits its target. The main challenge in designing a domestically produced missile based on the Sunburn is its size and weight. The P-270 Mosquet missile weighs approximately 4.5 tons and has a length of nearly 10 meters making it one of the largest operational anti-ship missiles. Given these dimensions, it seems unlikely that Iran will produce an exact replica of this missile. Instead, it is more probable that Iran is developing a lighter and smaller version that can be mounted on various launch platforms, including ground-based, naval, and possibly even aerial systems. We hope today's video has been informative and enjoyable for you. Be sure to let us know your thoughts. Do you believe the release of these images was unintentional, or was it a deliberate move intended to send a message? Drop your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more deep military insights. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.